and welcome to the Sarah Scoop Show. Today we have Lacey Mark as our guest, and she is from The Bachelor in Bachelor in Paradise. Thank you so much, Lacey, for being here with us today. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm excited to chat about some things. <laughs> yeah, well, we're excited to have you. I think we'd love to kick things off with just asking how you even ended up on The Bachelor and what made you want to do that. It's actually like a re ridiculous story. So I had a boyfriend, this was three years ago, I was 24, I'm old, um, and we were doing long distance Boston to New York, which really isn't even that, it's really not long distance, we're on the same coast, it was, it should have been easy, but um, we were not, it just wasn't working. So instead of being an, an adult and like having a conversation with him and saying like, you've been doing this, it's been upsetting me, blah, 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 because I was a kid, I was 24. I signed up for The Bachelor to piss him off and, and tried to have it sent to his email. I spelled his email wrong. So it went nowhere, went to cyberspace, joke's on me. So I called him and I'm like, did you get an email from The Bachelor, like some sort of confirmation? He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, yeah, I did something today to piss you off and I think I fucked it up. Oh, can I curse? Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I had to tell him what I did. And then we, we laughed about it. We ended up breaking up for other reasons. But they um, it was actually for Ben Higgins' season. Um, but they didn't call me until next. So. Oh, okay. So you didn't apply to date Nick. You didn't apply. I didn't really apply to date anyone. I was, like, I was like, was not trying to get on the show. I was trying to piss off my boyfriend. And it just so happened been Ben Higgins season who is a great guy um but then when they called me back for Nick season um when you go through casting you don't know who the bachelor is yet so I was kind of just like this opportunity fell into my lap I didn't plan on it it was unexpected um so I'm kind of just gonna roll with it and see what happens very cool so did you then get a call like they called you for next season so was that did you have a lot of time to prepare like were you at the time like how did that work yeah so they start casting at least I got I don't know if it's the same for everybody but I got my phone call like a four and a half months five months before we started filming but it's like it's that was like the very first phone call so there's obviously like different rounds of casting you have to go through and that takes like two months um but yeah I got my initial call in May and we started filming in September so what were your thoughts then when you found out that it was Nick and you were going on the show and all of that? I I mean, Nick's really hot. I mean, when, yeah. not to be like shallow, but when it comes down to it, I don't know anything about him. I actually never watched his seasons. Mm -hmm. I knew who he was just from like a pop culture standpoint, but right. I didn't know any like details or anything. So I was like, he's gorgeous. Why not? Why not? I'll show sure him and let's do it. When you went on the show, like I was reading, you have a very like, well diverse background, you have a great job. How is all of that leaving your regular life to go on the show? Were they helpful? Is that what you're doing now? That kind of thing. Yeah. So I was actually leaving my current job, or not like my current job at the time, not the job mm -hmm. I have right now. Um, the same time I was leaving um to film. Like they had some things going on within the company and they were just shutting parts of the business down. And it was happening the <laughs> time I was leaving for filming so I was like this is like a weird alignment of the stars thing like maybe I should really be doing this so all signs are just pointing to yes like not to be cheesy but yeah <laughs> I like that though like when things are to me yeah okay so I have to ask because everyone knows you as the girl that rode in on the camel where did that come from and how like how did you make that happen so I am not the most clever of people. So I asked producers for help trying to plan an entrance. And we came up with this idea as a joke. It was not, it was not serious. And then all, all of a sudden, one of the producers was just like, you know, I think we could make this happen. And it kind of became more of a joke than anything else of like, can we actually make this happen? Can we actually get a camel in 12 hours to Bachelor Mansion and have this be a thing? Um, the answer is yes, they can. <laughs> so they help you with that. Cause we see some girls walk up and just have like a little something. And then like, you're on a camel. Like, how do you get, were you just like putting it out there and like, Hey, I'm up for whatever kind of thing. Yeah. Kind of.
kind of. I mean, they'll help you if you ask for it, but like you're not. They don't like. They they don't come up to you and say you have to do this. Like right. they you and say what do you want to do? And you can plan it yourself completely. You can do something like what I did, something ridiculous, or you could do nothing. It's entirely up to you. And I was just like, I I, I kind of knew. I had a feeling that like Nick wasn't really gonna like me. I I'm very I'm a weirdo. Let's be honest. Like I, I'm a weirdo. So I was like, I'm just gonna roll with this and have as much fun as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. So that I love that though. You were just like making the best of it, no matter what happened. I was so had, for it. <laughs> had you uh, ridden a camel before? Never in my life. <laughs> Never in my life, and I'm actually terrified of horses, which is like, oh my gosh, my day with Diggy in paradise, I was like shaking. He was like, are you going to calm down? I was like, Diggy, I'm afraid of horses. Like, it was, it was not good. Um, but I think the scariest part of the whole thing was that Nick, Nick is very tall. Nick is six, six something, six uh -huh. two, I think, or close to it. And that camel was at least, at, at least eight inches taller than him, at, at the minimum, maybe a full foot. So I was like all the way above Nick and it came time to get off the camel. And I'm just like, hey, you going to catch me? Like, I, I didn't know what to do. That's so funny. So did, yeah, <laughs> I can't, I don't even know. Like, if, if, you have, you, if you have to find the clip, like I, sl I used the camel's like belly as a slide. I slid down like into his arms. And I was like, hey, how you doing? I'm lazy. <laughs> So did you, you were um, there, you made it through two, correct? Like you were two road ceremonies? I got sent home at the second one. But yeah, okay. So yeah. you were there, you went on the group date with the. the yeah, that, um, that, that was not, a uh, not fun. Time to break out the wine. <laughs> um, no, it was funny because I had like. And I'm sure that's why they put me on this date. I had mentioned in passing that all my friends are married and I've been a bridesmaid. I want to be a bride. I want to get married and all that stuff. And then I ended up on this date, coincidentally, where I had to be a bridesmaid. And not only did I have to be a bridesmaid, I was Danielle L's bridesmaid. She was like the most stunningly beautiful, like especially when she was dressed like in her bridal stuff, like gorgeous beautiful and I'm standing there in like this horrific like I don't know how many satin factories had to die for me to look that dumb like it is horrific purple satin dress and I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> so like how, how long were you filming that scene because obviously they cut it down for tv so were you like sitting in that bridesmaid's dress like all day all the, the group dates take all day um mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure, I mean, one-on-one's -on -one do also, but, um, yeah, I was in that dress all day. So did you make a lot of friends and, like, everything from the show? A lot of people said, like, in articles I'm reading, like, Lacey, how you left with so many good friends from The Bachelor, even if Nick wasn't the one for you. Yeah, I mean, for me, I got sent home from my season so early. So yeah. I think a lot of people see me hang out with people from other seasons and are confused, and it's not like a – it's not like a, ooh, she's not hanging out with people from her season type. Yeah. It's just, I didn't go through what they went through with them. So for me, you know, when I got sent home, I was the first one home. I was the only one here. Everyone else was still filming. And I had gotten in contact with a few of the Bachelor Nation folk that live in New York City. So that's kind of who ended up becoming my friends because I was spending more time with them inadvertently. And you were already living in New York before the show, correct? Yes. I know some people moved there after. Yeah, I moved to New York right after college. So I've been in New York since 2014. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, do you feel like you've gotten a lot of, like, how has it been for you living in New York? It's so populated and you've been on the show now. Like, people recognize you. Like, how do you deal with people, like, on social media or in person? Well, after The Bachelor, I was on I was on The Bachelor like total maybe two hours. Yeah, so I guess but, you should talk a bit about Bachelor Paradise a little bit. With yeah, Bachelor Paradise was completely made a <laughs> <laughs> I when I got back from Mexico, it was an adjustment. Um, 
I think maybe everybody else knew how to handle it a little better because they had done it already the first time from The Bachelor. Mm-hmm. Like, they knew how to handle, like, you know, Twitter trolls and all that stuff. Um, but for me, I just, like, I'm always friendly. I see people. I live in um, I live in Midtown East, so I live in an area of the city that's really young and has a lot of Bachelor fans. So there are a lot of nights I'll like, go out to a bar and I'll get, like, girls harassing me in the bathroom for, like, selfies and whatever but it's all fun I mean you can't do something like this and not be prepared to deal with something like that at all right um but like I mean it's fun it's cute it's nice to know that people actually care in a weird way yeah so okay so you were on next season obviously that you know I mean I feel like it worked out in the way that you had a good time but it didn't work out with love so you decided to go on bachelor in paradise what made you like give that a go Daniel. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not a secret. It was part of our, it was all part of everything that we were in a lot uh, before the show and the opportunity was presented to me and I filled in production staff on, you know, what was going on. I was like, I'm really not interested in doing this unless Daniel's coming and, you know, paradise was no guarantee. So like, cause we're all coming in at different times. Like I didn't know I was original cast until I was there. So, like, it's always a gamble, but I had it in, a, in good confidence that Daniel was going to be there. So I was like, all right, then I'm going to go and I'm going to do this and it's going to be great. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it was not great. <laughs> but you, you just, you came back, like you went home because you had your family. Yeah. Your grandfather, and you decided to come back. So did it start out, like, pretty good for you? Like, how are you feeling? Well, so timeline-wise, that happened the very first day. Oh, okay. The very first day we filmed. So we filmed for literally a day, and I woke up the next morning, and I'm getting mic'd, putting on my makeup, and um, Elon, one of the producers, is like, listen, we got a call from home, and, like, we, I need to talk to you. So they took off my microphone, they pulled me into like a private room and they filled me in on what was going on and they got me on a flight home immediately. First first flight out to New York, they were mm-hmm. rock stars. Like they got me home so as fast as they possibly could. Right. Um, and they also knew too, cause I had, ironically, I had done an interview that morning. Um, I don't think it aired, but I had done an interview that morning on camera in my grandfather's, um, I wear his collar ring from 1941 because he's like ancient um but I had done an interview that morning wearing his ring and they were like what do we do with this footage now are you comfortable with airing it sorry my neighbors have a dog and the dog is barking (laughs) um but that was literally day one day one so I went home and I really like the people that were there that I already knew I already knew but I had a hard time connecting with people that I hadn't met because I, I left. Right. When I came back, it was like a lot of those people had, you know, they, during the shutdown and stuff, they all spent all this time together and I wasn't there for any of it. So when I came back, everybody kind of already had this bond that I was completely uninvolved in. So I was kind of the outcast in a way. Right, because they've just spent so much time, you hadn't been there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you originally met on the show then for Daniel. But were you saying, well, kind of, like I know <laughs> you said you were like talking to him. Where is that something like you guys had already started dating or just like like sliding your DMs? There's only so much I can share. But oh, okay. No, uh, no, that's that's but totally it was, fine. Uh, it was most definitely not DM sliding. Um, he, uh, he likes, he'd rather do that behind people's backs. Um, Ooh. It, <laughs> I've never told anyone that. Hey world. Oh, we have an um, exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but it was more of like consistent yeah. for a long time. Um, and we had had some pretty serious conversations about what us going to paradise together would mean. Um, a lot. We talked about it a lot. I mean, I spoke to him. We kept in touch every second of the day. We were very close. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the saddest part of the whole situation is that 
beside the fact that I got my heart broken to take that out of it, I kind of lost my best friend too. Right. And it was just like a messy, bad, messy situation. Is so like, are you still open then to doing something like that again? Or are you kind of like, it was hard. I'm scared. I'm definitely very, very scared. Um, you know, the other side of it is besides the fact that I already went into this with Daniel, if I didn't go into it with Daniel, I, no one was interested in going on a date with me. Like, I, it just clearly wasn't working. So I don't know. I don't know. I had like a recent bout of inspiration when Claire got engaged on Winter Games because I'm like, oh, my gosh, and, I was so cute. I agree. I know. And I feel like I'm kind of similar to Claire in a, in a few different ways. Um, maybe more when I was blonde, but, um, <laughs> no, when I saw her get engaged, just like, maybe, maybe I would do paradise again. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out. Right. I, I wouldn't rule it out, but it would have to be like in a, a certain circumstance to make me want to do it again. So have, so I'm guessing you watched the winter games. <laughs> I can't saw- I can yeah. see Canada got redemption. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, well, just going off of that, like a lot of times people like yourself that have been on Bachelor try to keep up with the recent seasons. And so uh, tonight will be the finale of Bachelor with Ari. How yeah. are you feeling about this season? Um, you know, I don't think Ari is my cup of tea because mm-hmm. it's literally just tea and I need a little more. I don't right. want to go so far as to say he's boring because I know what happens with editing. We all know what happens with editing. I'm sure there's a ton we're not seeing, but like more than a ton that we're not seeing. Um, but I don't know. This season was like, I feel like the women were so incredible. I think casting really, really outdid themselves with like the caliber of female that they chose to cast this year. And I think uh, – I think Ari just didn't know how to, what to do with it. Right. And they seem, many of the women on this season seem very serious about getting married. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing is like, you know, with these shows, you get like a 70, 30 mix. Usually 70% of the people are going on the show because they can, or they want to get famous or they want to sell fat mm-hmm. bum boxes. And then you get the 30% who, trust the system, believe in the system, and are actually tr- trying to marry this guy. And I feel like this season, that split, like that ratio that's been happening the last 10 years was completely gone. I think yeah. those girls would have married him. Right. So how are you, is there anyone that you're hoping, I don't know, I mean, obviously there's so many spoilers out there, but is there one that, like one of the women that you were hoping he picks? Um, I'm definitely glad to see Becca. Mm-hmm. I like her. I think she's got a really good head on her shoulders. She's so classy. She's elegant. She's beautiful. Um, I think Lauren B surprised me in the sense that like, I didn't think she'd make it this far, but yeah, I also think that's part of the editing problem. Like I'm sure her and Ari had great conversations and it just didn't get, get aired. But from what we did see, I was surprised that she made it this far. So what is, like, I know that you were on next season for The Bachelor just for the the second row ceremony, but how much time did you actually spend with Nick? Maybe, like, 10 minutes total. <laughs> oh, my gosh, really? Okay. Well, okay, so here's the thing. My group date was hijacked by Corinne, obviously. Right. So none of us really got to spend that much time with him on that group date. So that really only left cocktail parties, and I got sent home with the second one. So, do you feel like for I know that there's like commercials, like it's starting to cast again for the women. Do you feel like the women do have to be like extremely aggressive on The Bachelor. Yes, for sure. Um, a lot of times, it's like at least I know my first night, I was afraid to interrupt anyone because I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. And, like, there's kind of this unwritten rule that people follow where if you get interrupted, you have to say, okay, and walk away and, like, let yourself get interrupted. You don't have to do that. You can say no. I 
there was one actually one time I was with Nick. Okay, so maybe I spent 15 minutes with Nick. <laughs> there was one one point in time I was with Nick and um shit, who was it? It might have been Haley. It might have been my girl Haley. Someone came in and was like, Can I talk to Nick? And I was like, No, sorry, like you can come back in five minutes. You got and so then you had your five minutes? Yeah. But I, none of that got aired. But <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's like, I mean, I'm sure based on what we've read and uh, the other girls I've talked to, like you're there and uh, either you're being filmed or you're like in the house or for all of these days, but they cut it all down to just the hour, two hours that we see a week. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why it kind of looks like a lot of times when we're having conversations that we're talking about nothing because there's so much that they have to cut out and they can really only keep a certain, like X amount of minutes from each conversation. Um, so whenever you were on Bachelor in Paradise, I think someone that I talked to said only two weeks. Is that correct? Like it was filmed for two weeks? Or yeah, something. it would have been longer, but we had the shutdown and the shutdown was, I think, 10 days. So we lost yeah. filming. What's your opinion on um, actually falling in love, getting engaged in those two weeks? Well, I, what people also have to realize is we all know each other ahead of time. Right. So it can happen a lot. Like, people are like, I don't understand how you can go to Mexico, meet someone in two weeks, and get engaged. And I'm like, I knew Daniel for months before before we got there. Most of us, I'd say 90% of us, know each other ahead of time or have gotten in touch with each other somehow, some way ahead of time. Yeah. So it's easier. You're also, I mean, you have no cell phones, no internet, no television, nothing to distract you. So you're constantly only like focused on what you're doing with that person the entire time. You're not worried about anything else because you have nothing else there with you. Yeah. I mean, that does make a lot of sense because that's your one goal. <laughs> you're there. Is to yeah. Meet someone. Please. Exactly. And it's like, you know, you are forced to sit down and talk about your feelings a lot, which helps. I feel like in modern dating, at least what I see dating in New York, which, like, is the worst, like, people are afraid to talk about that type of stuff. If someone likes you, like, then they're going to ignore you because that's what that's what you're supposed to do. And, like, all that, all those things don't happen in paradise. Right. It's also, like, you know, in real-time dating where maybe you would see someone once a week for six months, uh, six weeks. And then all of a sudden you're in a relationship. It's pretty much the same in paradise. It's just, you're seeing that person every day. So it's six days in a row instead of once a week for six weeks. Yeah, no, I think that's putting it into perspective very well. Cause uh, real life dating, you get busy, you're working, you're doing all of these things. So it takes longer, but yeah. listen, Chloe and Lamar got engaged in two weeks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but Chloe and Lamar didn't work out. <laughs> well, they would have, he didn't like, go crazy but <laughs> no that's so true I like how like honest and really you are is that kind of how you were through the whole process I know you were just kind of like open the casting and all that and it happened for you but is that people often ask like what advice do you have to go on the show that's usually we have people asking questions so I'm saying some that they ask hearing my other chats with Bachelor Nation yeah um so yeah, what what advice do you have for them? You have to stay true to yourself. I'm sorry, I'm like sitting weird and fidgeting. Uh, <laughs> you have to stay true to yourself. Um, that's like the one thing I wanted to maintain the entire time, through Bachelor and through Paradise. Also, I never wanted to become like an exaggerated version of myself. I never wanted to become something that people expected me to become. I always just wanted to do it my way, and I did everything you saw me do whether you agreed with it or you didn't was because that's who I am. And that's how I wanted, that's how I wanted to do it. Right. So did you watching the show back? Did you watch the show back? I know people watched. Them. I did. I did. I watched with a lot of friends, you know, it was hard because it was like, you know, for the, for the beginning, I was then having to watch myself on camera, you know, be told that my grandfather died. So that was kind of reliving that experience. And then reliving the high points in my relationship with Daniel and then again reliving the really really low points which were going on in real time because you know we hadn't filmed the finale yet at that point so right. it was a it was very emotional for me very emotional yeah because I think that's like 
it's important and nice to know, like talking with you, like you are real people who are experiencing these real feelings. Cause so many times, you know, you read blogs or you read magazines and it makes it almost like you're playing some sort of role or you're just yeah. trying to clear it up, but you are genuinely there hoping that it would work out with Daniel. Yeah. And mostly because, you know, before the show we had talked about how it would, um, mm -hmm. but he had other plans. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was there for a very real reason. I wasn't there for any, anything else really. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you give to people that have, like, you are obviously still a strong individual who has gone through like heartbreak. And I mean, you have a great career, you're living in New York city. Like what advice do you have for other single women that aren't necessarily lucky in love? Stay hopeful, don't get discouraged, and don't settle for someone who makes you feel like you're hard to love. Because that's just not worth it. And that's what I find a lot in New York is that, like, sometimes people make you feel like you're a hard person to love. And that's – don't don't settle for that, ladies. You're better than that. <laughs> I love that. No, that's so great. Lacey, I mean, you've been such a pleasure to talk to. Is there anything else you want to say or add? I know like a lot of people follow you and really felt like they got to know you on Bachelor in Paradise, which sounds kind of crazy probably for you, but they watch your journey. So is there anything you want to tell the people that are that have followed you? I guess just thank you. Um, thank you for, you know, your kind words when you saw me going through the ringer on television and not holding anything I did against me. Um, and keep following, keep up. I'm Lacey and Mark on Instagram and Twitter and I tweet nonsense. So if you're looking for important things, I'm not the person to follow, but <laughs> there's might be some exciting things coming up. So keep in touch. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Lacey. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.